back to another episode of Mark chapter 13. starts off with Jesus and his disciples leaving the temple and the disciples are looking at the temple as they're leaving and they're blown away by how it's built, how the stones are all put together, how this amazing structure has been assembled. And they say in verse 1, teachers, see what manner of stones and buildings are here. In other words, they are amazed that man could even build this. And Jesus answers them in the verse 2 and he says, do you see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another and shall not be thrown down. Now what the disciples didn't realize is that Jesus was actually prophesying here the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. Now we talked about this a little bit in the last episode, but what happened was in 70 AD the Jews started revolting against the Roman Empire and Jerusalem was raided. During the fighting the temple was set on fire. Now we don't know if this was on purpose or by accident. Josephus records that a firebrand was thrown through a window, but the whole temple was consumed where everything was destroyed. Now there's been some debate on why the Romans ripped the temple apart, but what many people believe is that when the temple was set on fire, most of the gold inside began to melt and seeped down through the stones. When the Romans conquered Jerusalem, what they literally did was rip off stone by stone, brick by brick, to try and get to the base of it so that they could retrieve the gold. It literally fulfilled Jesus' prophecy that not one stone would be left on top of another. Now from verse 3 to the end of the chapter, Jesus goes on to discuss all of the things that are going to lead up to the second coming of Christ when Jesus returns in the future. So in verse 3, Peter, James, John, and Andrew sit down privately with Jesus and just say, what are the signs that we should look for that the world is getting close to its end? Now Jesus goes down a very interesting list of things that will happen before he returns, starting in verse 6. Jesus says that many will come in his name saying, I am he, or this is the way, and that they will deceive many people. In verse 7, he says, When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled, for such things must happen, but the end is not yet. In verse 8, For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines and troubles. He goes on to say that his followers will endure beatings in synagogues, that they will be brought before kings and rulers as a testimony to who Jesus is. In verse 10, Jesus says that the gospel needs to be preached to every single nation first before he returns. Then in in verse 13 he says, you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Now let me ask you, does this sound like a world that we're living in today? Earthquakes, famines, wars, nation rising against nation, people turning on each other, and people hating the gospel of Jesus. You see, Jesus didn't leave us in the dark as to the signs of when he would be coming back soon, and we are seeing all of these things today. Now in verses 24 through 27, Jesus actually describes what it will look like when he returns. He says that the sun will be darkened, that the stars will not give their light, and that all of the heavens will be shaken. Then in verse 20, 26, it says, Then they will see the Son of Man talking about himself coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send his angels and gather together the elect from the four winds from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of heaven. You know what this is saying? Is that when Jesus returns, he's not going to be visible to only one section of the earth. Or, well, it's daylight over here, but this side of the earth actually can't see Jesus when he returns. When Jesus returns, everyone will be able to see him all at once. Now, I have no idea how that's going to be possible. Obviously, some of these things are supernatural and beyond our comprehension. But when he returns, everyone will be aware of it at once. Now, the elect that Jesus is describing here are those who believe in Jesus. When Jesus returns, it's not for everybody. It's for those who have committed their lives to Christ and those who follow him. In verse 31, I love what Jesus says. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. You know, today, 2,000 years later, we are still discussing, we're still teaching and learning from the words of Jesus. And it's not just until today. Jesus' words that were recorded in the Bible will never pass away. Finally, in verse 32, Jesus shows us that nobody knows the day or the hour or the time when he will return. Look at verse 32, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, only the Father. Only God himself knows when Jesus will return. Now, I have seen people over the years try and accurately predict when they believe that Christ will return. And to me, this is always so foolish to see. First of all, why would you even try when the Bible clearly tells us that nobody's going to know? To give you an idea of the number of people who have tried to predict Jesus' return, listen to this. Hippolytus, of Rome, Sextus Julianus Africanus, Betus of Libya, Pope Sylvester, Joachim of Fioria, Jean de Requadla de... de Sandro Botticilia, Johannes Stoffler, Thomas Munzer, Michael Stiefel, William Aspinwall, Johann Jacob Zimmerman, John Mason, Joanne Wydeck, Henry Archer, Emmanuel Swadenberg, Richard Brothers, Joanna Southcott, George Rapp, John Wesley, Jacob Lorber, William Miller, Joseph Morris, John Rowe, Charles Russell, Wavoka, Joseph Smith, Jehovah's Witness, John Chilimba, John Chilimba, Sun Myung, <laughs> Sun Myung Moon, Rudolf Steiner, Herbert W. Armstrong, Benjamin Cream, 
Cream, Edgar Weisenhunt, Harold Camping, Jerry Falwell, Ed Dobson, Timothy Dwight, Edgar Sace, Isaac Newton, James Armstrong, Harold Camping again, Ronald Wyland, Jack Van Imp, and Mark Blitz. Future predictions that we are still waiting on include Gene Dixon, Kenton B. Shore, Alice Bailey, and Frank Tipler. Good luck, guys. So I'll show you guys something kind of funny. On May 21st, 2011, was when one of these guys, Harold Camping, said that Jesus was going to return. So on that day, I had a little bit of fun on Facebook and I posted this picture. <laughs> So obviously we don't know when Jesus is going to return, but we can look at the signs of the times, like all of these things that Jesus prophesied about and recognize that the time is coming close. So what does that mean for you? What does that mean for me? It simply means that you need to know Jesus. Time is running out before Jesus returns. And what it should do is make sure that we ourselves are not only prepared for Christ's return, but that our neighbors, our friends, our family, that those people whom we care about, that we make sure that we reach them with the gospel of Christ. Listen, there is nothing more important in this world than telling somebody about Jesus. That's what the gospel is all about. Guys, thank you so much as always for joining us for Mark 13. We're getting close to the end of the chapter, but we're not there yet. Come back tomorrow. We're going to pick it up right where we left off in Mark chapter 14. See ya.